How are you filming? The Conservation Game, a movie that a lot of people in the animal industry are talking about. Is it a con or is it the real thing? Before I get to the review, I have to mention that my opinions and the views expressed in this review are mine and mine alone. They don't reflect any place that I've worked in the past or the present. And full disclosure, I've worked under Howard and Carol years ago. And I'm also friends and worked with Jeff Kramer at an AZA zoo. I currently work at an AZA zoo and fully support the AZA in the SSP programs. The main person of this movie, Tim Harrison, I met him years ago when he was promoting Elephant in the Living Room, another excellent animal documentary. So with all that out of the way, and anyone that knows me knows that I'm not afraid to give my own opinion, it's my and my own opinion itself. Here we go with the review of the conservation game. It follows along animal advocate Tim Harrison and his mission to find what happened to some of these animals used on TV shows. We get introduced to him as a child who, like many, enjoyed watching animal shows on TV, especially talk shows where animal experts brought live animals on to talk about. By people like Jack Hanna, the often egotistical Dave Salmoni, and newer figures like Jared Miller. Now what's important to note is people like Jack Hanna have done wonderful things to promote wildlife conservation, but the problem, what this movie exposes in a sense, is when they go on these TV shows and they bring on these cubs, now many times they'll say they're from a facility, the person bringing it on like Jack Hanna, but then the people operating behind the scenes and who often uh, supply the animals for them aren't from that same notable facility, let's say. Because you think about it, if you're a good zoo, a good AZA zoo, are you really going to want a cub pulled from its mom? The put into a travel crate, the brought into a studio under the stress of the lights and having a live audience and all that, just for a moment of time to get people's attention that you hope will lead them to supporting wildlife conservation? No, it's not worth it and it's not good welfare for that cub. So what they do is work outside the good zoo system to find anyone who's willing to give them some animals to use as props to get on TV because that TV show host wants that wow moment of bringing out a snow leopard cub or a tiger cub. It's about getting viewership and getting attention. And that's where the problem is, is that these people, their heart may be in the right place to get attention for animals, but their mind isn't. Now that's not to say every zoo animal on TV is stressed. No, some animals might not have any problems with being used as ambassador animals. That's why you can't brush everything in the animal world with a broad stroke. For instance, a lot of zoos get confiscated pets, like snakes. Now, if you take that snake out of its tank and carefully show it to people, they might understand the importance of having them around and not fear them. They would learn that from seeing that snake firsthand. Now, years ago, I ran a MySpace page, which shows you how long I've been in the zoo industry, over 20 years. And on it, we would talk about zookeeper topics like animals and conservation. And one of the topics brought up once was the animal ambassador programs at different zoos. And three common problems came up from keepers talking about these programs. One was the need for new animals all the time, be it cubs, because they're cute and little and people can handle them, or just uh, new animals that'll work around people as keepers are presenting them around the zoo or in VIP events, kind of the show off. The fact that we always kind of need the ones that are gonna work, which means you need to produce a lot. And then also, where are we getting these animals from? Because the zoo doesn't have, or the SSP really doesn't have any for the ambassador program. So you're working with people outside the uh, scrutinized, I guess, in a well oversighted you know, AZA world, you're working with outside people. So that's not always a good thing. Number two was the fact that here you are holding this animal, telling people about it, and they're probably not paying attention to you. They're probably staring at the animal, which is a point that was, you know, uh, brought up in this movie. How do you then portray and tell people, this is not an exotic pet, this is not a pet. Even though I'm holding it and everything's good and I'm walking this cheetah around the zoo and all that, and one of the problems with cheetahs is the exotic animal trade, but hey, it's not, it's not a pet, it's not a pet. How do you do that and get people to think it's not a pet when it looks like a pet because you're walking it around on a leash? And thirdly, what is the housing of the animals? A lot of ambassador animals aren't in a nice uh, zoo enclosure. They have an off area because they're brought out so much. They're often housed in an off area that's sometimes not up to the par of what they should be housed in. And those were the three common themes of why people in the zoo field and zookeepers 
didn't really like that whole ambassador animal program all the time. It's not to be said that ambassador animal programs are bad. There's a lot of great ambassador animal programs out there. You just have to be really careful because you're walking that fine line of um, good welfare and then of course trying to get people's attention. Because that's the million dollar question. What will it take to get people to care about wildlife and want to support real animal conservation. That's what we're all wondering in the zoo field, what we need to do to get people really committed to saving our planet and all the animals on it. So the AZA is mentioned in the movie along with SSP, and I'll be the first to admit the AZA I think does a poor job in promoting what it is and what it stands for. The average person walking through a zoo doesn't know what the AZA is, doesn't know what an SSP is. It's our job as keepers to educate that but even with that, it just, the AZA has never been able to really promote itself, letting the public know why it's there, what it stands for, and all that. Now, it's not to say if you aren't an AZA zoo, you're bad, because there are some zoos who just, they don't want to pay the fees to be in the AZA, and they don't want to deal with the politics of the AZA. But I always suggest people to go support good places, the research then usually if you're supporting an AZA place that only operates within the SSPs, that is a good facility. Now the SSPs is a species survival program. That's in a way uh, keep track of all these animals. To tell by this movie, sometimes animals fall through the cracks even within the SSP. Now that's not really to blame the SSP because that coordinator is probably trying to call every zoo and track every animal to see you know who should breed with who, who shouldn't breed with who. And that's another thing is the animal rights community want you to think that all just, zoos just want to breed and exploit animals and, and breed, 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 breed. A good SSP actually will reduce the amount of animals in captivity, in a zoo, under professional care, in a cage, whatever term you want to use you know, for the zoo world. That's what they are, are actually a good structured program to just breed the animals with genes, with this genes, with those genes over there to keep a good healthy population so we can keep these animals around for the next 100 years. Now and also a good SSP will do some good research. Now that's invasive research. Sometimes the word animal research has a, a bad connotation to it and it, it shouldn't because there's non-invasive research that happens with some of the animals in these SSPs that directly helps the wild animals out there. So to keep this review shorter, I can't explain everything. So as always, read the links I put in this video's description. If you have any questions, you can always reach me or you can leave it in the comments below. So this movie also shows us a private owner in Ohio who's trying to do the best for his cats. At one crazy moment, he opens up one of his enclosures that has tigers in it to throw in a pumpkin. One of the movie figures is standing right there. That is an unsafe situation and he should have not allowed that to really happen. But anyhow, this movie does a great job in the impossible in trying to track down where these cats go. Where the cats that once was a cute cub used on TV as a prop to get people interested in the animals, when it grew up, where did it end up? And some end up in not so great locations, being taken care of by not so good people. The few of the animals that they are able to find are in small enclosures and not getting good attention and care. So all in all, is this movie worth watching? I felt like they kept the dramatic music and a, a gotcha type journalism to a minimum. And they really took a serious look at the problem we have here. And it's not by using some old zoo footage, but recent events and appearances. Unfortunately, the animal community sometimes takes a long time to evolve. Sometimes it's at a snail's pace. Look how long it took the SSP to go out and say stop breeding white tigers. White tigers are just generic tigers that add nothing to conservation value, but just trying to get people's attention. So sometimes it takes a while to get good policies in place. I feel this movie's at its best when it's showing you the personal struggle of a person like Tim, who idolized TV presenters like Jack Hanna, and then learning that these great people used animals just like props, and they didn't make sure the animals' needs were being maintained by outside people they trusted or got used to getting animals from. The most compelling scenes were from the undercover shots of these horrible animal auctions. And these TV hosts like Jared Miller walking around them looking to see what they can exploit next. I like that Carol Baskin was used to a minimum. Let's face it, she's seen as being from Tiger King and an animal rights nut. And too much is brought up then about her private life at times and it distracts us from looking at the issues that she's actually working on. 
I wish the movie was a little longer, actually. Maybe we would have talked to some of the Snow Leopard or Tiger SSP coordinators. Or to cat conservationists out there who do feel that the zoo world is very important and that their success ties in with the zoo world's success. Or at least have gone back to the Ohio Zoo directors and asked them why they ended up not writing letters to support the Big Cat Safety Act, an act that the AZA supports. Unfortunately, it's also an act that never seems to get fully through. I don't know if people in the zoo world are scared of the exact language of it, but we all can agree, everyone can agree, that every exotic cat in the United States should be able to be tracked. No exotic cat should be allowed, as seen in this movie, to fall through the cracks. It is simply wrong. What's important about animal welfare is other countries always look to us. We can't complain about China allowing tiger farms and other places in Asia allowing people to take photo ops with tigers and all that stuff. Well, we're still allowing kind of the same thing. We'll bring a cheetah into a VIP event and allow people to take pictures all around it. We'll not even be able to keep track of our own cats we have. So therefore, we can't tell others what to do with their animal policies until we clean up our own. I also like the movie that they didn't play on the fear of like, the guy next door to you maybe owning a tiger and that could kill you and everyone around you. Yes, there are a lot of privately owned tigers in the United States. But the bigger picture, I think, is looking at what happens to all these cats and their welfare, more so than playing upon the whole fear thing. Because you're more likely getting you know, hit crossing the street than you are of someone's exotic animal escaping and killing you. So like I said, we all must agree on, at the minimum, we need better tracking for animals. So that these cubs, once used for a TV show prop, don't end up in a bad place. So the best thing about this movie is it does expose the need for us to have better tracking than a simple USDA headcount. We need to know what happened to these animals. And these animals must be more important to us than a simple prop that we're using on TV to gain attention. They must be treated like the kings and queens of the animal world that we know they are. That's how we'll truly get people to support zoos and to support wildlife conservation. Thanks for watching.